three-time Fiesta Bowl champion on the conquest for a national championship in restored prestige. The Blue, Boise State. Had a lot of good times at the Blue Field, but unfortunately, I witnessed two of the worst statistical years in the last couple decades. My first year was Hank Bachmeyer at the helm. It was a tumultuous season, finishing 7-5. and five. In fact, they lost three games at home that season, which hadn't been done in over 20 years. Following season, Hank started again, but decided to transfer midway through, bringing in dual threat Taylor Green, who helped turn the season around to 10 and 4. Got the Frisco Bowl victory and saw glimpses of Ashton Genty greatness. I knew Genty was about to blow up and he had an all-American campaign and led the Broncos to a Mountain West Championship last year. Then the dominoes started to fall and we landed guys like Malachi Nelson. This is where I step in to coach Boise State and rebuild them to a national contender once more. I can only recruit players from Idaho or from the states that border. To take it up a notch, we have to sponsor a walk-on, meaning we must start a one-star prospect somewhere in the lineup. And lastly, the ultimate goal is to win a national championship within five years. Year over year, it's a steady decline. We have to turn this around. Quick look at our roster, none other than star-studded Ash and Genty at the top. My man said, I'm a Bronco for life. When you're a top end Mountain West team like Boise State, you have your pick of the crop. But remember, because we like pain, we can only recruit from Idaho, which there's only three guys, or states that border Idaho. Washington has a little more talent, but a lot of one stars. To satisfy the one star challenge, I think I'll target this Juco player. Every Oregon player is gonna make the board as well. Sick, it looks like there are no high school recruits coming out of Nevada this year. No shortage of kickers to recruit. Wyoming in the house. And lastly, one player from Montana. I'm gonna feel miserably in this rebuild if we don't get a fresh slate of prospects from these states. Week one going up against a star studded Husky team in rainy Seattle. Let the season begin as we get familiar with our guys out here in Boise. Dylan Johnson already putting on a show for the Huskies, starting the season strong, but Reed says, I'm gonna start even stronger. Big pick. The Huskies' first pass of the new season ended in disaster. Talk about a big stage for Malachi Nelson in his Bronco debut. Starting out the season with a bang. Ashton Genty, six. Dynamic weather's gonna matter a whole lot more in the next game, but for now, we should be able to be successful in the air. It's Ashton Genty's world, and we're all just living in it. Malachi Nelson finishing off the job. Malachi Nelson has been working hard in spring ball to ensure a smooth transition to the regular season. So far, we're passing with flying colors here in week one. I couldn't picture a better start until we did that. Nunley to the house. Not quite. Actually, maybe quite. He is out of here. So, uh, yeah, that just happened. With a quick play here, pitched out to Nixon, they take the lead. Fourth quarter magic. You're telling me there's a chance. No, there ain't. Had the Huskies on the ropes, but Boise State could not finish the job today. Whew. It's good to know that recruits update throughout the season because now we have more guys from Idaho to choose from. This is how the rest of year one shaped up. Took on FCS West and gave them the 34-6 beatdown. Much of the same to say for Air Force, 35-10. On the last second against Fresno State, they beat us at the buzzer. Southern Miss came to town and caught these hands. Utah State also felt our wrath. We then squeaked by the Nevada Wolfpack, but there was no squeaking, only stomping against BYU as we beat them 38 to seven, there was no chance. Colorado State kept it close, but this go ahead field goal gave us the dub. Somehow we lost in overtime to Wyoming. Took care of business against the Aztecs 31 to 21. Played down to the competition, yet we still got past the Lobos 21 17. The feather in the cap, the Mountain West Championship, we got revenge against Fresno State 30 to 17. Honestly, 10 and three was a pretty successful campaign. That led us right here to the Las Vegas Bowl against USC. Definitely not our end goal, but for a first season, we'll take a 10 in three Las Vegas Bowl. We like to see the success early in this one as Bowens just dekes out two guys. Boise! However, the Trojans are proving to be a tough opponent right now. Nothing like a third in 21 connection. Bingo, Bowens! And within just a matter of minutes, we were able to cash in with Ashton Genty. And as you can tell, this one's getting out of hand. It's already a two possession game and it's about to become three. Year one of the rebuild ends in a unfortunate defeat. End of year one offseason is here. Freshman left end said deuces. I'm heading to Tulane, which is unfortunate because there's a lot of seniors graduating and we need depth. Signing day came and went. We landed with the 62nd best class. Let me introduce you to the first batch of Broncos. And remember, we had to stick to the gem state and surrounding states. So yeah, our best signee was a kicker. A couple solid high 60 players like Mike Hollis, Chad Burke, Clayton Goddard, and Jason Mooney. Training results are in. Ashton Genty, welcome to the 99 Club. A lot of our 
our new guys are definitely going to get the red shirt. Chick-fil-A kickoff week, it's about to go down against the Old Miss Rebels. Boise State looking to improve after their 10-win season. Old Miss is 8th ranked in the nation, so it's going to be another tough week one matchup. First drive on defense, looking to clamp down the Rebels, and that's exactly what we do here. We got guys like Misa taking a second year step. Year two of this rebuild, honestly, we just need to land some big recruits. I'm tired of the people in the gem state and surrounding areas not giving us the talent we need. We are literally at the mercy of what scouts can find. Because honestly, that's how you build a dynasty. You need the system pumping. You need fresh talent year after year. We'll go ahead and hit another read option because we love running the option. It's going to be cheesy in college football 25. You're not going to want to mess with the reverse read option when I get that thing cooking. Kicking off the Chick-fil-A game in style, Malachi touchdown. On paper here in year two, Boise State has a higher overall than Old Miss, which was a little surprising to see. 99 overall for Genty never felt any better, and you best believe I'm going to be running wild with him in the next game. I think so far, this is the last result anyone expected. I mean, we're shutting out Ole Miss, and in style, big sack. Coach sparks something up here for the Rebels, because the fourth quarter, they have been cooking it up. There's their second touchdown. They're down within a score now. Are we taking a bigger lead, or are, what are we doing here? The trick play a Boise State feather in the cap. When we needed to deliver most, we call the trick play and Ashton Genty delivers a dime. No pressure here from the freshman Idaho native kicker nails it. Could this in effect be the game here? Fourth and seven slip screen. It's all sniffed out. That's ball game. Go crazy folks. Your Boise State Broncos are off to a one and zero start. Now that was encouraging. Yes, but am I getting my hopes up that this is the year for a national championship run? By no means. For recruiting purposes, this batch of recruits had some solid dudes. So right now I'm struggling with this list because every guy I want, I'm losing on. Now 17th in the nation. I'm interested to see how the rest of year two goes. Just a little five day touchdown performance in this 35 10 victory for Malachi. The only one raging in this game was the Cajuns. Bearsford comes alive as Boise wins 35-7. Did what we have to do, 21-10. Living up to the number four rank, took care of BYU 38-13. The milk can was secured after 35 points were put up. Just snuck past the Aztecs 21-16. Six big boy touchdowns for Malachi, 44-7 of the Lobos. Ranked third in the nation, Boise shuts out Nevada, winning 33-0. Was not expecting this type of role. Boise State's the real deal. Big win, 42-14. The dream is still alive, Malachi. Malachi got hurt. Maddox Madsen stepped in and leads the team. Game-winning field goal as time expires, 31-28. 38-3, starters just resting up at this point. Mountain West Championship Week, 42-23, just another walk in the park. After going 13-0, we finished third in the AP Top 25. This is where the new playoffs would come in handy. We're only competing for the Rose Bowl, not expanded playoffs, as true to original NCAA 14 dynasties. But honestly, what is really the point of a rebuild right now? I didn't expect Boise State to be this good. The Mountain West is a cakewalk. Because after only two years of rebuilding, we're 13-0 with Malachi Nelson, Ashton Genty, and co. After winning the Chick-fil-A opening kickoff, I really was convinced there wasn't going to be anyone else that could put up a fight against us in the Mountain West. Per rebuild rules, though, we have to move to a power four here by the end of next season, as Beersford just came alive this season, man. Talk about an opening drive in the Rose Bowl. Bring in the heat. Moss going to keep it himself. Flicks it out to no man's land. Joyner still picks it up. Fourth down. Crazy part is we retain both of these players next season as well. Looking for a little revenge as the Trojans beat us in the Las Vegas Bowl, this one would be a lot sweeter. So I think the defense is going to be hurting after this season, but the offense will be intact. It really is crunch time right about now. We don't want to choke this lead, and Clark says, I will not let you down. Big interception. Unfortunately, it didn't matter because the offense out here choked it, and USC got another crack for the touchdown. Miller Moss cooking out here 20 for 24. Well, it is officially crunch time now because I think USC He's got our number, and I just forced the shiz out of that. Honestly, Bronco fans, don't look at me. Look at the defense on this one. I don't know how they just let these guys back into the game. Unfortunately, our touchdown isn't going to mean much. And with that, we fall to the Trojans for the second time in a row. A perfect season ends at 13-1. and USC just did us dirty. Rose Bowl 2. That's painful. But I guess that gives a reason for this rebuild to continue. A couple Boise State seniors here recognized first team All-Americans. Gabe Hunter, Herbert Gums Jr. Congrats. Second team All-Americans as well. We got four 
all Mountain West team. Yeah, it was pretty much ours. All right, that's what's up. Latrell Capel's a projected first round receiver. We lost some 80 overall dudes. Offseason recruiting, really only two guys left that we want. Alex Ingram, a 80 overall outside linebacker. And then Jim, defensive tackle, 81 overall. Lionel Lyles from Utah. Moment of truth. We got him. Let's go, baby. This is going to be a huge if we want any sustainability for the long run. Much, much better this year. 18th ranked class compared to, I think it was 62nd last year. Let me introduce you to some of the dudes. 81 overall defensive tackle. 80 overall six foot six linebacker. 278 overall athletes that would make for great quarterbacks, but they also will fit in a variety of other positions. Yeah, it was a linebacker heavy class. Two more high 70s. A couple players cracking the 90 threshold. Our big punter from Australia in and then we got Malachi Nelson up to a 92. Got to cut just a few people, so I'm going to trim this thing down. Absolutely no shortage of good players to pick from this year. I'm going to start spreading the love. Willie Cooper, 75 overall middle linebacker. Brian Atkins, a stud tight end. AJ Stratton, part of the defensive wall we're building. Of course, I can't forget about the man Joe Hale. Take all my points. I seriously ran out of points, so I need to redistribute. And then we just got to throw scholarships at him. Dang, that's crazy. Only year three of the build, and we're already up to a 90 overall. Already seen the fruits of our labor ranked 16th this year, but we're only going up here in just a couple of years. But remember, we got to get all this done before the five-year mark. And as per usual, in a Boise State season opener, we start off with a tough opponent and we squeak this one out against BYU by a touchdown, 28-21. And I decided to jump in this one against Washington to show off some of the new guys we've been bringing in to Boise State. It is year three after all, so there's got to be some new folks making a difference. And yes, before you ask, Kenny Baldwin is still being strung along the JUCO one star star prospect. That challenge honestly didn't have as much impact as I originally thought it was going to have, so noted for next time. Let me know how that rule should be improved. However, on this play, Baldwin is in the game, and we're going to throw it to him. Got some new players out here on defense like true freshman Blair, the athlete has converted to corner and he gets pushed over on that one, but fourth down nonetheless. Baldwin, our one-star friend, is out on the field right now, and ooh, he wanted that one. Because we can and because we got Ashton Genty, I'm going for it on fourth down. And yeah, you're not stopping the 99 workhorse. Now cleaned up with a fresh set. We get Riley involved for the first down. That is a true freshman making a play. Bringing in all the local boys near the Gem State to come play for Boise State. And uh, wow, Malachi did not go down on that one and coughed it up. And our mistake has consequences. In this case, it's a Husky touchdown. Got to clean it up here just a little bit. When you're playing on the blue, we got to have a sense of pride. I just talked about sense of pride out here on the blue. So it's time to show it. Hubbard, the new guy, the fullback, reach in. Almost there. Always a fan of the new guy cashing in. And there he is, Michael Riley with his first collegiate touchdown in NCAA history. If Boise State wants to flirt again with a perfect season, we've set ourselves up with some difficult non-conference games. And boy, oh boy, do I sure hope we're ready because we have to force our team up to the power four conferences next season. Giving up touchdowns ain't going to cut it like that. Broncos have been getting punished in this game. We've made a couple costly mistakes. Thankfully, we're able to make it right on that touchdown pass to Chase Penry. Now just one touchdown away from tying this thing up. And when I want to tie a game up, I start off with Genty. Who else would you trust in a situation like this? Big man, touchdown. That's my All-American. Heisman campaign loading here for Sir Genty. Misa, I love Misa this play, and I'm going to stop Adams in the backfield. Fourth down. Jeez, I look at the time. I see we're down by a touchdown. We need this, and I'm going to go across the middle. Riley could not hold on. That was a lot of pressure for the freshman in a contested spot. And heartbreak. Yes, we came back, came close. We had far too many mistakes. Washington didn't beat us. We beat us. And so for the rest of year three, this is how it went. Inspired after the loss, they take down Air Force big. Blazers got blazed by the Broncos, 31-17 in this one. The loss to Auburn hurt as we dropped a couple more in Mountain West play. Definitely had an unexpected step back here in year three. Ended up at the famous Idaho Potato Bowl right here on our own blue turf. We're going to go ahead and chalk up this year as as a fluke, fingers crossed, because we're going to need Malachi Nelson to leave it all on the line in his senior season and he moved to the power four. Not exactly the way we wanted to send out Ashton Genty either. So unfortunately for Ball State fans, we're going to have to unleash on you guys. All the pent up anger, frustration, everything that we couldn't accomplish from the season 
is going to come and feel the wrath against Ball State. And of course, it starts none other than our own Ashton Genty making a move and putting up six points. Gonna miss this man on the team, that's for sure. I was not joking though when I said this was going to be a bloodbath against Ball State. Only a few minutes in, we're already up a couple touchdowns. Maybe I got a little ahead of myself when I said bloodbath because as you can tell, Ball State just scored their second touchdown before half. Or did they booth review? Yeah, it was obvious. Why are we reviewing this? Doing our best to protect the hometown turf here. Ball State is putting up a fight, so kudos to them. And next thing you know, it's all tied up. Fourth quarter action. So what in the world is going on here? Ball State came to play. I mean, a respectable 8-4 and four on the season is nothing to laugh at. I just think if you all couldn't tell, this is literally the type of season that we've been having. It hasn't been pretty. Went from being ranked third in a Rose Bowl matchup to now battling it out here in the Potato Bowl. And the Cardinals got the Broncos on the ropes here just for a second. As we go deep and up, it was deflected. If the defense just holds on this play, we will get another chance on offense, and that is exactly what we need. Malachi says, no more playing around. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I am gonna let this thing fly. Apparently off our own teammates' helmet. And as the final whistles blow, at least we were able to salvage the Idaho Potato Bowl to cap off the season. Because I'm always a happy camper when we can continue to defend the home turf. At least Malachi and the boys gotta go home on a happy note. But uh, yeah, we have a lot of work to do in year four coming up. Able to convince Misa to come back another season, that's good news for the defense. Sad news to see a lot of good guys go. And honestly confusing here, Ashton Genty not declaring for the draft. 99 overall, I feel like he'd be a round one to pick. On the recruiting front, things went okay this season. We nabbed 10 guys already, but there are a few more that we're still interested in, so we're gonna toss some points and hopefully snag them. Brutal, man. We did get our top two targets, which is cool, but everyone else, we didn't get. Somehow still put together the 15th best class in the nation. Got our boy from Wyoming, the big offensive tackle. James Taylor at six foot five, 232 pounds. This is the future of quarterback for Boise State. I can't show you the skills now, but the five-star has over nine. 90 throw power. And then always a good day to bring in additional 70 overall threats. Training results are in. Malachi's at the top of the list now that Genty's graduated. In and out red shirts like Candy, most notably James Taylor here. He's going to be the quarterback of the future. Now in a power four conference, I wonder if we'll have more clout with the recruits. Tougher competition usually attracts more talent. Utah's got a few intriguing recruits. Rounding out our list of 35 with JB Vincent from Twin Falls, Idaho. 35 guys, no more, no less. It felt like there weren't really any more, even if I wanted to go find some more guys. A few intriguing options to kick it off. Like five-star Steve Davis here, he just screams linebacker to me even though he's deemed an athlete. Not every day you find an 86 overall, it's a punter, Brad Johnson. There's going to be a new punter in Boise. On the theme of special team, special players, Scott Young, welcome. And then I sorted it by overall because I'm basically going to go down the list and give the highest overall guys scholarships and points. Starting off week one with a beatdown Wildcat touchdown. Our big 12 debut against the Raging Cajuns. And on conference opponent went really well. 63 points later, we were walking out of there victorious. And honestly, I thought this team would be a slight step back with Gen T gone, but actually this team might be a little bit better. No cap. Malachi Nelson out here taking the ball, delivering it under pressure to Terry. We're off to a rumbling start. I think I already mentioned it, but I'll mention it again. We are in the big 12, so this is going to be a fun season. A lot of our recruits that we've been rebuilding with are starting to make a presence, and I expect them to make a big difference because in year four of a rebuild, it's go time. There's one of them, Hawthorne, bending but not breaking third in goal. Let's get the final stop, and thank goodness you're out of bounds. Yeah, celebrating like we did all that. Now, I'll happily celebrate the offense if we can go ahead and get it done this drive, and look at Dubar, man. When your mentor was Ashton Genty, I sure hope he told you a thing or two about how to run the rock at the college level. These are the Broncos we have built, and speaking of those guys, Dahl is one of them we brought in in the previous year's class. So shout out to you for your first collegiate touchdown. We are not content with no measly Idaho Potato Bowl. If it's the chip we're after, we're going to have to prove it to just about everyone, including the opposition today. Wilson says, ah, not too convinced, guys. You got to do better than that. Need a better second half as the first half was shaky. If we can just get points, that'll be a dub. Third and goal. We want them points, so Malachi is going to step up and dive for it. We are literally a yard short, so let's hand it up the middle to Dubar. Are you kidding? me sir your whole body was in the end zone yet not one sliver of it crossed ain't no way i'm not happy with that animation challenge that 
Well, when we're looking at this angle, uh, forward progress ain't considered. And here we are in the fourth quarter when the unthinkable happened. Time expires, touchdown, OT. All the defense has to do is not blow it like they did in regulation. It's a fourth and 13. Broncos one play away. One play away from extinction, and they hand off draw their way to defeat. That was a crazy way to go out for Washington State. They just hand off draw and it's over. Beaver Nation beat down 34 to six. First Big 12 Conference game, 31-24 Boise. 35-23 against our rival BYU. Just dogged on the one in five Sun Devils with 45 points on the blue. Then we survive a nail biter, 25-23 against CU. Maddox Madsen still filling in. We barely pulled this one off against UCF. But going up against Houston, the crew was much more efficient, 35-18. Down by one, 30 seconds to go, jump ball end zone touchdown for the win in similar fashion the frogs go down 38 35 and it all led to this a heartbreaking defeat against west virginia as they knock off our national championship dreams wow and that loss had even greater implications west virginia gets to represent in the championship game in our first year in the big 12 falls just short on the other side baylor in kansas state the one and two seeds taking care of business instead we get stuck with the alamo bowl going up against washington state and without a doubt we sure let Washington State feel it today in the Alamo Bowl. Not the outcome we were hoping for our seniors like Malachi Nelson. Malachi Nelson in frustration just chucks one last ball up of his entire career and it falls to the ground as this one comes to an end. Boise State does get the win so they can celebrate that. It's just not the ultimate win they were hoping this year. And now going into year five of this rebuild, our last chance, the burden's going to fall in the hands of a redshirt freshman. He is a five-star superstar quarterback quarterback sort of like Malachi Nelson so hopefully the team around him is still intact some real top end dudes leaving us here Misa welcome to the NFL you'll be playing on Sundays second round pick already landed a few solid players in recruiting so might as well throw the whole farm at this William dude and there we go a few extra guys to top it off turning the page to the final season of this rebuild there's been some highs some lows honestly it's been a great use case to see why the 12 team playoff is a huge ad because there were two times at least two times where we would have been competing for the national championship. So all in all, I think it's been a successful rebuild for the Broncos as we got our best batch of guys yet. Only a redshirt freshman, this man can sling it and take off and run. Our guy Dubar up to a 92 overall. Marlon and Brad, two comparable underclassmen to back him up. Joe Fenton, fullback supreme, 84 overall. And then the top of our receiver room is led by guys like Michael Riley, solid tight ends. There's our guy Joe Hale getting a start. Insane offensive line. Defense just as good as well. I mean, check out some of these names as we just go through the list high 80s 90s all across the board and jeesh year five here we are 95 overall 95 defense that's what will win us the championship let's get our feet wet with opening day action here against the troy trojans and in year five you're looking at a complete defense that we built from scratch so it's impressive to see our team shape up to 95 overall not gonna lie i've done some rebuilding but it doesn't feel like a traditional rebuild with Boise State. They were really good already, and all we did was maintenance. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone as Boise State is group of five royalty. On the blue field, all we do is win, 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 no matter what. And here we go, stepping up to the line of scrimmage. It's our boy Taylor. Welcome to the team, a lefty slinger getting it done. And to keep it a buck, I don't see many lefty gunslingers in the recruiting portal these days. That's rare. And maybe that rarity is what we need to get to the promised land. As a young QB, got to rely on a seasoned running back like Dubar. First it was Genty, then it was Dubar. The baton of great running backs continue out here in Boise State. And Taylor with a dime. Yeah, better review that one because I thought he had him on the money. Did Prince get a foot down yes sir he got two of them suckers in there what a ball taylor with the impressive drive on his first ever drive keeps it himself looking a little bit like cam newton out there the big frame 6'5, 240 just plunging in and that was his first collegiate touchdown of many more to come looking for a little bit more points here before the half and i think we got a connection right across the middle smith with a brick hands Offense still trying to warm up in this one. Thankfully, it's not anything crazy. It's just Troy right now. No shade to Troy. They're actually pretty good from time to time. It's just when we get going in the Big 12, it has to be flawless execution. And here we go. Now we're starting to cook. We're back down into the red zone. Shout out to the defense for giving us time to let our quarterback get all warmed up. We needed the buffer. Across the middle, re-scores. Troy's back within a score. Big third down here. We can ice this one out, and we do. So there were some sloppy things and things we need to clean 
clean up, but hey, that's what week one's for. The important fact of the matter is that we walk away here victorious, 1-0, and because it is our final campaign, and it has to matter. We have to send Boise home on a good note and make them proud. Still getting his footing, Taylor wins it in heroic OT fashion. Much better, 31-7. to Taylor has the ideal place to grow with the stellar defense behind him. Backups came in long ago, 48-17 to over Cincinnati. Starters keeping fresh with this BYU beat down 48-3. Now 6-0, Boise holds on against ASU 31-21. Defense is the reason why we're here, and the unit shows up again as we knock off CU. Dubar with the go-ahead fourth quarter touchdown. Going 9-0 with this win over Houston, Boise State has had no problem in Big 12 play. Snowfall in Boise has the Red Raiders out of their element. Down they fall 34-7. TCU is 1-9, and our play has earned them 1-10, 44-7 final. Season finale in Boise against West Virginia. They spoiled us last year, not this year, pal. 34-10, Boise State finishes 12-0 in regular season play. And that leads us right here to the Big 12 championship game against the K-State Wildcats, my two schools, undergrad and grad. Both schools playing a pretty similar brand of football right now, stellar defense and a balanced offense attack. In the Big 12 championship game, K-State got up fast, but Boise State responded even faster. And despite K-State's valiant effort at the end, Boise State's defense was swarming, 35-21 Broncos. And with this final kneel down, Boise State is officially the Big 12 champs, hand them the belt. That is extremely cool to see and only their second year in the league. It is a surreal feeling for the quarterback, Taylor, who is a freshman. Offense was efficient, but defense was really the backbone, the thing that held this whole foundation together. So couldn't have done it without any one of those guys on that defensive roster. As you see the offense in Taylor celebrating, he was a great player this year and he did everything he had to do. But look at Brandon Ward, our freshman red shirt defensive end as well, kicking butt on the defensive side of things and hold up that trophy coach. We love to see it. Big 12 is here to stay in Boise. And for my cats, they'll have another day to shine. And with the cherry on top, Dubar gets the Heisman Trophy after a stellar performance this year. 1,700 total yards, 24 touchdowns. As the one seed, the job's not finished. We have to take down the big, bad Irish. Two undefeated teams and two of the best defenses in the nation. That should make for a incredible matchup today. Nothing's going to be easy through the air, on the ground. We're going to have to fight. And talk about fight. Notre Dame's coming out swinging in this one. They are are trying to score fast and the defense is trying their best to hold bluffing the blitz it is a pass play he just throws it off the post fourth down we bend not break but in fact Notre Dame has no intention of kicking their field goal they're going for it here on this fourth down play scrambling looking for something it's no good they turn it over Boise State defense holds at the one yard line what a stand now the issue at hand getting away from the one yard line we need some cushion let's hand it off to the Heisman winner Dubar see if he's got anything up his sleeve and that's not the trick we wanted to see thankfully the safety did not hurt us in this one a special teams play set us up to score with a five point cushion yeah that's odd to say a five point cushion we can get some more insurance here not only do we have Dubar in the backfield, a Heisman winner, I believe we have a future Heisman winner in the quarterback. James Taylor has been a really good quarterback in his first season. Future's bright for that glow up, but right now the present belongs to Dubar and he is a running machine. Rose Bowl action, running up and down the Fighting Irish, trying to put a move on. Taylor stays up and then takes a big blow. Working all the way down into the red zone. Dubar, get us a little bit closer, my friend. Keep pounding the rock here. It's back to Dubar. He's breaking free of one tackle, but not the next. With two minutes to go, gonna throw it to Dubar, and I just forced that thing. Taylor with the pick. A defensive battle has lived up to the hype, as this is only their second third down conversion all game. But I guess as soon as I talk about defense, it goes out the window, huh? That's usually how these things work, ain't it? And wow, are we really about to make another one yard stand? This would be something special. You can definitely tell we're frustrating Notre Dame right now as they're just looking for anything and a QB keeper did the trick. Down by two with the ball in our hands here in the second half. I think we'll have an opportunity to throw this one out to Riley. There's our big receiver from Montana. Dahl and Riley, two guys that have stepped it up from the recruiting panel at Gem State or surrounding areas. They wanted to play for Boise because they wanted to be in moments like this. 
Irish back in a familiar spot here. The one yard line. This time they get the slant. One play and done. Touchdown. Jumping into the fourth quarter. This game needs a hero. My money's on the freshy Taylor here. Who doesn't behave like a freshy? I'm going to need him to buck up and pretend like he is a senior in this moment. Or equip his platinum field general tier as you may have seen in the new game. So that's what we need right here, right now. And that type of play is indicative of that. Two elite defenses going back and forth in this one. First and goal, Boise. First and goal, let's hand it off to the Heisman winner, cutting it back up middle. He is just a yard short. No one says it's illegal to hand it off two times in a row to a Heisman winner. That's exactly what you should be doing. Under a minute to go, it's the third down. They're handing it off, they're converting. We gotta take timeouts. I think my theory here is let him score because look at the time difference. Let him score, there we go. Now we need to D up and play really tough on this two point conversion attempt. I don't want him to get it or any funny ideas. There we go. Letting Notre Dame score was the strategic move because there wouldn't have been any time left. They could have chewed all the clock and hit the game winning field field goal which is exactly what we do not want to happen instead we'll take 32 seconds and a timeout and work the out of bounds territory this has to become the biggest drive of his young life and we're already past midfield literally everything rides on this right now i am getting a, just a bit of the nerves but we'll take off and get a first down yes sir working our way down here pretty quick and we have a man that's bellamy no he had it in his hands in and out don't get many opportunities like that that's for sure but atkins gets just a good of an opportunity if not better oh my gosh i'm gonna have to just call a timeout we're going back with an empty stick here with eight seconds left no timeouts i need the perfect play call can't afford any sacks none of that garbage and oh another chance second down wait yeah we're at the inches line i think we should just plunge it in i'm gonna read option up the middle he keeps it taylor scores with one second remaining oh my goodness it is pandemonium out here boise state fans are going berserk this is insane i am beside myself can't contain the excitement we convert for two more points so we're up by at least a field goal b s u boise state all we got to do here one second keep it in front of us nothing miraculous and that is a fitting end the defense with the dagger josh patterson that is a way to go down because the whole season they have been carrying us that was incredible a national championship in year five at the buzzer with our built up team here so i don't know if rebuild is the perfect word i mean it is a rebuild we did a lot of building but boise state was already winning as soon as year one because they are a group of five royalty but yeah we built them up to the national championship we took their game to the next level and won so many games along the way so man i hope you all soaked it up because we are the champs Boise State, I'm sending y'all off on a high note going into the new game, EA College Football 25. 36-33, hope you soaked it up, man. I'll catch y'all in the next. Keep it here with your boy. Hit that subscribe button and drop the like, and I'll catch y'all in the next.